So why would this lens be bad for you? Or is it even bad for you? If you're new to photography or you've been doing it for a while, you've probably heard the advice that you should maybe stick to one prime lens, go out shooting with that and practice. But where does this advice come from? Is it good advice? I wanna explore all these things in this video as well as giving you my approach to using zoom lenses in perhaps a better way. So let's jump in. Now, just to make sure this video isn't too boring, me yapping on about lenses for eight minutes or so, I will provide plenty of examples of different focal lengths and different lenses, both prime and zoom lenses throughout the video. Today, a topic that might surprise some of you, and that's why zoom lenses might not always be the best choice for you. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying zoom lenses are inherently bad or evil or anything like that, but they can have a tendency to cause some bad habits, of course, depending on how you choose to use them. Yes, we have a big plus side to using zoom lenses. Naturally, they are incredibly versatile, allowing you to cover a range of focal lengths in a single lens, making them a popular choice and potentially reducing the amount of gear you need to carry or the amount of lenses, which is always nice, but is having more options always a good thing? If you have too many options, sometimes this is just overwhelming and it can actually hinder your creative decisions, especially things like nailing your composition. My first point here is basically to avoid FOMO or this fear of missing out mindset. To explain, let me give you a little bit more detail about me and my photography journey. When I started out, I was pretty much only using zoom lenses. To me, as a fresh photographer, I thought this made a lot of sense, cover as many options as possible, which is exactly what I did. I essentially started with a 24 to 70 zoom, and then next up, I got a wide 15 to 35 millimeter zoom as I shot a lot of landscapes. And then eventually I picked up a 70 to 200. So I thought this was great. I had from 15 to 200 millimeter covered every millimeter focal length in between. And I was quite late to the world of prime lenses. I think I had a 35 millimeter during this time, but that was it. And I also wasn't studying or paying much attention to my overall composition. So honestly, for me, I think having so many options like this, it maybe slowed down my initial learning about things like composition and learning those valuable skills starting out. I also started out really carrying as many lenses as possible, making sure I have all these focal lengths covered. So I had this fear of missing out. I didn't want to get to a location and think, oh, I wish I had this lens. So I'd carry far too much gear and carry too many lenses. It wasn't until a few years later where I actually found a real love for using a 50 millimeter prime. And I found myself using this lens way more than anything else. And surprise, surprise, I also found my photography to really improve more and more at this time. Of course, this wasn't just because I was using a single prime lens. I also started to think about composition and just overall think a bit more deeply about my photography, which really helped me improve. This idea of learning any new skill and placing certain restrictions on yourself, like only using one prime lens, actually really helps as you can dial in and focus on other things like your composition. So this is the idea of creative constraints, which can also aid in creativity. So where am I at today? Yes, I still use zoom lenses. Next week, I'm gonna show a video of what's in my camera bag for this year. And there's actually a couple of zooms in there, but my approach and how I use those zoom lenses has totally changed, which I'll go through in a sec. 50 millimeter and my 50 millimeter prime is still my favorite, especially for days where I'm heading out for street photography. But should you avoid zoom lenses? Well, no, you don't have to. And you certainly don't have to do anything I say regardless. But just keep in mind, they do have the potential to make you slightly lazier as a photographer. Notice here I say potential. I think it depends on how you are using them. So whether you're new to photography or if you've been doing it for a while, I think there actually is merit in this advice of picking a prime lens and going out and practicing with this. And this is why you probably hear it from so many different professionals. If you wanna try this advice, sticking to a prime lens, my best advice is to find one you really like, a good quality one, because this will make you want to go out and use it. For me, my go-to is the Canon RF 50 millimeter 1.2. So this isn't going to be in everyone's budget and it is also large and heavy, but I love making images with this lens and I really enjoy using it. Whether that's a 50 millimeter prime like I opt for or something slightly wider like a 40 or 35 millimeter prime, 
it's really up to you, but I think these ranges are the most versatile, but pick one that you really enjoy using. Coming back to having too many options. So think about if you are just using one prime lens. We already have so many different options when it comes to choosing our composition. We can move in closer, move further away, crouch down to get lower, lift our camera higher and tilt it more downwards, move side to side. So in many cases, even with a single prime, this is already enough decisions to make. If you add zooming in or out to this list with the lens, the options almost become endless. And I think this is where this advice comes from. Again, having this constraint on one thing ultimately means you'll be able to focus on other things like moving yourself around within a scene and learning lessons on composition much faster. I think this is true even if you have been doing for photography for a while. If you really wanna practice and improve your composition, try and stick to that one focal length, go out and practice on that. As mentioned, I still get plenty of use out of my zoom lenses, perhaps not as much as when I started out. I still like to opt for primes in a lot of situations, but my approach to how I use my zoom lenses has definitely changed. And this is something I can recommend to others as well. As an example, if I reach for a wide angle zoom, like a 15 to 35, rather than seeing this as a 15 to 35 millimeter lens, I see it as a 35 millimeter prime that gives me the option to go wider when I get stuck and really need it. This essentially just means I'm mostly shooting at 35 millimeter, which to me is a great focal length. But if I get stuck and I'm in a scene where I want to go a little bit wider, then of course I can if I really want to. This probably works even better with a 24 to 70 because you can pick 50 millimeter or even 35 as your main focal length and just focus on using that. When you really need it, you can still zoom both in or out, but try and stick to that one focal length. I do a similar thing with my 70 to 200. Sometimes I shoot mostly around 70 mil or sometimes I pick 85 or even 135 as my main focal length. So this is only a slight shift in your mindset, basically using your zoom lens is more like a prime lens, but then you can still zoom in or out when you need to. So this approach has really helped me even now and something I can definitely recommend for others. So hopefully this is something you can try out for yourself. Again, the goal here is to really dial and focus in on your composition. Leave that FOMO at the door and remember having more options isn't always going to make your photos better. Anyway, I hope you found this one useful. Please let me know your thoughts on Zooms versus Primes down in the comments. I'd love to continue the conversation there. Next week, I'm gonna be sharing a video on what lenses I choose and what's in my bag for this year. So subscribe and stay tuned for that one. Keep on creating and keep on growing, my friends. I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.